for the protocol observed. A very good morning to you all, and I'm sure you are now even more energized after that wonderful performance by the Human Choir. It's a great honor for me to participate and deliver these remarks on the Southern African consultations on the AFCA protocol on women and youth in trade. Ladies and gentlemen, as we heard previously, the African continent connects about 1.3 billion people across 55 countries with an estimated combined GDP valued at US dollars 3.4 trillion. However, as we all know, intra-African trade accounts only for about 15% of the African trade volume, which means that African countries are engaged in trade with the rest of the world and rarely with, within Africa and the neighboring countries, which was actually the rationale for the AFTA to come into being. And it is envisioned that the effective implementation of the AFTA Africa, with the effective implementation of the AFTA, Africa will become the world's largest free trade area in terms of the number of member countries, territories, population, and GDP. At its core, AFTA commits to an all-inclusive development process that ensures that needs and priorities of women, youth, and small and medium enterprises underpin its implementation. And as well as the fact that informal cross-border traders are integrated into formal trade and the economy. The United Nations Development Program, which I represent here in Namibia, is working as the integrator of the United Nations system at large. And we have been working in close partnership with the AFTA Secretariat and other UN agencies to support the operationalization of the AFTA across the African continent. Our focus has been and continues to be mainly in three strategic areas. The first being thought leadership, under which UNDP has worked with the AFTA Secretariat in 2020 to produce the inaugural Futures Report, making the AFTA work for women and youth. This report identified concrete policy measures and investments required to better integrate women and youth into value chains, jobs, while highlight, highlighting opportunities availed by the AFTA. Insights garnered from dialogues with women in trade in Namibia have also informed this report. We had a big session here in, I think, 2021, which went into the report. Secondly, the UNDP continues to support the AFTA implementation process at national, regional, and continental levels by enhancing the export capacity of women, youth, and working with the regional economic communities and other institutions to build their capacity. Thirdly, we have supported efforts towards generating evidence for policy recommendations that seek to address challenges related to financing, especially for women and youth operating in the informal economy and in cross-border trade. Over the course of the past three years, our organization has significantly expanded its presence within the entrepreneurship ecosystem, extending support to both formal and informal enterprises. We are fully cognizant that in order to achieve enduring impact, it is imperative to collaborate with partners 
given the limitations of operating in isolation. Consequently, we have forged partnerships with entities that are unconventional within the tax system, including startups, venture builders, and logistics companies. It is important to note that this approach does not diminish our collaboration with government partners. In fact, it strengthens the support we provide to them. Through our endeavors, it has been repeatedly demonstrated that those individuals who directly experience a problem often also possess the most suitable solutions. This is why our initiatives are consistently designed and implemented in close collaboration with entrepreneurs. And by taking this approach, we have been able to identify and scrutinize specific pain points at a micro level, enabling us to gain a comprehensive understanding of the issues of at hand and ensure effective implementation of our agreements. In collaboration with the Ministry of Industrialization and Trade, as well as the Namibia Trade Forum, UNDP has been actively engaged over the last couple of years, I may add, specifically at enhancing awareness of the Africa Continental Free Trade Area Agreement. Last year, we conducted workshops in five regions of the country, engaging some 253 stakeholders. Additionally, we have commissioned several studies to update information pertaining to value chains and an ongoing uh, initiative on market intelligence to support women and youth particularly. Moreover, we are currently exploring opportunities for trading on digital platforms. The Honorable Minister had made a reference to that, to digital platforms. And one such platform is Tambula. And I think uh, later on during the course of the events, you would be hearing from them which is a domestically developed e-commerce platform and through Tambura we have successfully connected informal traders with a wider market. Furthermore, we have provided training to these traders, equipping them with the necessary skills to operate their own storefronts on the platform. Now, enhancing the capacity of the informal traders is also very critical because they are important players in value chains. And this is something which goes to promote trading across borders as well. Moving forward, we intend to investigate payment methodologies that alleviate some of the constraints associated with cross-border trading. The UNDP's Accelerator Lab, in particular, is collaborating with its counterparts across Zambia, in Zambia, and Zimbabwe, in particular, to gain comprehensive understanding of the informal trade at our respective borders. Thus far, they have mapped out uh, potential solutions which will undergo testing in the coming months. And this is where we invite you all to connect with us so that we are able to co-create uh, and map out these solutions. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we must collaboratively engage to ensure regional integration across the Southern African region, guarantee that our trade environment is conducive for both goods and services within the region and in Africa at large, and it supports inclusive growth without leaving anyone behind. We are convinced that a dedicated support is deployed at scale to effectively capacitate the informal sector and the MSMEs. The Southern African region stands to maximize the positive development gains from the actor. We believe, and as a has been evidence that enhancing the capacity of MSMEs, especially those that are women in youth led, will drive structural economic transformation through trade and investment. 
This would create resilient, inclusive, and sustainable economic growth and development in Africa. Even as we are gathered here today at the other end of the city, there is the launch of the next National Development Plan, the NDP 6, which is underway. And this is our moment actually to mainstream our, this as a priority in Namibia's next National Development uh, Plan. Therefore, we deem these consultations as critical to unlocking a better understanding of some of the challenges encountered, providing an opportunity to identify risks that may be mitigated and possibly providing co-owned solutions. And most importantly, they will provide a voice for our women and youth. UNDP pledges its commitment to the government of Namibia in supporting the full implementation of AFTA through capacity building initiatives, creation of awareness and sensitization, and including provision of catalytic funding to support Namibia's efforts and contribution in the region towards maximizing the opportunities and benefits of the AFTA. We deem the agreement as a vehicle for creating decent jobs and well, enhancing inclusive and sustainable development, supporting green recovery, and ultimately eradicating extreme poverty across the African continent and supporting the acceleration and attainment of almost all of the SDGs by the year 2030. So I thank you for your attention. And as the minister said, we really are very invested in looking forward to the outcomes of this deliberation. Thank you very much.